go past that text and continue after that text? I'm sure. So there was um, Mr. Depp apologized to Ms. Hurd for that incident. Um, Mr. Depp said in his UK testimony, well, I, I only maybe playfully tapped her on the back with my foot. Um, Mr. Depp texted Paul Bettany and talked about how he was so drunk and out of control and engaged in bad behavior. He texted his friend Patty Smith a very similar type of text about how drunk and out of control he was. Um, and then finally, Amber Heard wrote an email um, talking about how distressed and, and heartbroken she was. Objection hearsay. I, 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 I mean, I don't agree. I, 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 I don't. Sustained. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. All right. Can you give, can you give another example? I, I think those are all I can um, remember at this point. Okay. Um, what if any, uh, what if any, um, sorry, I'm going to have to go a little bit further here. So you concluded that Amber Heard used psychological abuse and some reactive physical violence, I think I heard you say. Is that correct? Objection leading. O overruled. Can you please explain to the jury what you meant by that? Yes, that is correct. That, um, you know, Amber Heard reported to me um, some of the behaviors that she used that were psychologically aggressive, um, the name calling, the putting him down and, and calling him um, very bad names and insulting his, his fatherhood. And she was uh, very shamed and remorseful about that. She also indicated, you know, using, and as some of the testing showed, minor forms of violence, pushing, shoving, um, throwing objects. We see that a lot with um, women when there's not proportional force. Women are more likely to throw objects. Um, and then the more severe act of, of punching him, which a punch falls in the more severe category. And, and the context, um, as she explained it, was that he was coming after um, Whitney and she stood, her sister, and she stood in the way and she punched him. Now, does that make uh, Amber Heard a perpetrator of intimate partner violence? Objection leading. O overruled. So, so that was one of the tasks that I had to consider. That was one of the hypotheses that I had to consider. And given um, all of the other data, um, that was not my opinion. Okay, thank you. Now, you stated that you read a number of therapy records. Please tell the jury why are therapy records important? Therapy records are critical for a forensic psychologist. When we have the opportunity to go back in time and see what a person was dealing with, what the content of their distress was, and what the symptoms of their distress was, it really gives us a snapshot in time. So they become very critical as part of the overall forensic psychological evaluation. Because we as psychologists understand how people sort of treat in therapy and what to look for. Um, so in looking back at uh, Ms. Hurd's therapy records, we see sort of real time unfolding of this dynamic in this relationship. We see early on in her notes with, in her report with Bonnie Jacobs and in Dr. Bonnie Jacobs' notes, reports of constant concerns about Mr. Depp's substance abuse, constant concerns about him passing out and vomiting, constant concerns about not Objection, wanting to Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. She can characterize that and say she relied on that. Overruled. Thank you. Please um, continue. Constant concerns about how do I get him into treatment? How do I get him help? Um, Ms. Hurd starts going to Al-Anon at this point, early 2012, in the beginning of the relationship, because she has to figure out and wants to figure out a way to support the man that she's dating right now and the man who she's falling madly in love with. There were reports in Dr. Jacobs' notes early on about his controlling behavior, about his jealousy behavior, about him not, of not wanting to do certain jobs, of not wanting her to wear certain clothes. So this is going back to 2012. Um, with 
no indication of why would she be saying that but for the sole purpose of trying to get help and trying to get guidance in this relationship that she finds so difficult. Um, there are indications, as I mentioned before, of the sexual assault and the sexual abuse and, and how he would, you know, when he was angry and when he was drunk, it was mostly drug and, and, and dr alcohol um, fueled rage when he would, you know, throw her on the bed and try to have sex with her. And then, you know, if he was not able to perform, he would get more angry at her and blame her. So we have this dynamic of blaming her for his inability to take responsibility for his behavior. Those themes were throughout Dr. Jacobs' notes. Did, um, did Dr. Jacobs assign any diagnoses to Amber Heard? Um, she did. Which Early way? on, she diagnosed her with panic disorder um, and then later with post-traumatic stress disorder. All right. And did Dr. Jacobs diagnose Amber Heard with borderline personality disorder? No, she did not. Histrionic personality disorder? No, she did not. And is that important? That's very important. When we're trying to figure out the course of somebody's illness, the course of somebody's psychiatric difficulties, as I stated, well, I don't think I got to state, um, personality disorders usually start in adolescence early. Objection. Early. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. Okay. Um, you also stated that you reviewed Dr. Connell Cowan's treatment notes, correct? Correct. And you also read his deposition testimony? Correct. And you had uh, uh, how long of a collateral interview with him? Uh, I believe it was two hours. Okay. And what, what did you get from, from all of that data? So by the time that she gets to Dr. Connell Cohen, which is 2014, I believe, uh, September 2014, is when Dr. Kipper comes on the scene. Ms. Hurd's psychological functioning is, is significantly deteriorated. She's suffering more anxiety, more sleeplessness, more agitation, more emotional dysregulation, this fluctuation in moods. And when you sort of look at the records of what happened in those first two years from Dr. Jacobs, and now we have up to Dr. Connell Cohen, and we see all of the incidents that she was exposed to, including the sexual violence and the coercive control, it makes sense to me that her status, her psychological functioning has deteriorated. Um, and in Dr. Connell Cohen's notes, that's what he's always trying to do. He's trying to help her, help Mr. Depp, help her act in a way so that Mr. Depp does not hurt her. Um, Mr. Depp, I mean, pardon me, Dr. Connell Cohen was very concerned for uh, Amber Heard's safety, as was Dr. Bonnie Jacobs. Dr. Jacobs was very concerned for her safety, and she continued to talk about safety aspects for Ms. Heard, as was Connell Cohen. Um, you know, they did, both of them, both therapists understood, and Ms. Heard talked to them about it, that there were times that she fought back and she used violence, and times that she screamed and she said things that she didn't want to. Um, but nevertheless, that did not change the balance for them either, and they were very concerned um, that because of Mr. Depp's significant substance abuse and his sort of poorly controlled anger that at some point he was going to seriously hurt her. Did Dr. Cohen provide Ms. Hurd with a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder? No, he did not. Did he diagnose Amber Hurd with histrionic personality disorder? No, he did not. Is that important? It's important that you are, have a, an individual, Ms. Hurd, who's in therapy for over two years with one therapist and over two years with another therapist, and you're not seeing those characteristics of a personality disorder. If, if the, the manifestation of a person's difficulties and illness and symptomatology is better explained by another disorder, then you don't qualify for the personality disorder. You can't get the diagnosis. I mean, that's part of the criteria. So if it's not a pervasive pattern in a variety of contexts, and it can't be better explained by her trauma experience and the exposure and the symptoms as a result of that trauma, then you don't get a personality disorder. And that's why they didn't diagnose it. Did you read Dr. Amy Banks' deposition testimony. Yes, I did. And what were her findings? So she, Dr. Banks had one session, um, one couple session with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Um, Dr. Banks is um, 
uh, very reputable. She works up at the Harvard Medical School Cambridge Victim of Violence Program, which is a very well-known program for understanding. Um, the objection, and, Your Honor. What, what's the objection? It's non-responsive to the question. The question was, what was the findings? All right. Tell, tell us, tell the jury who Dr. Amy Banks is. And just like I said, so she's somebody who has um, a wealth of experience in understanding intimate partner violence and the dynamics of, of uh, violent relationships. But she only had one session with the couple, um, and it was her determination when they were both there and the violence was talked about that Mr. Depp did not deny the violence that he um, perpetrated toward Ms. Heard. Um, she also did as everybody has, all of our other therapists, because Ms. Hurd admitted as such that she also used low levels of violence as well. So um, Dr. Amy Banks had that uh, opinion. Did you review Dr. Laurel Anderson's treatment notes and read her deposition? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, and what was the significance of what you learned from Dr. Anderson? So Dr. Anderson similarly thought that there was violence and abuse in this relationship. She was the one therapist out of the four who qualified it as mutual abuse, um, which um, the termination I've talked to you about, I, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, but she did see and did understand that there was violence and abuse by Mr. Depp. What was most notable was that after the December 15th, 2015 episode, Ms. Heard called her in addition to calling Connell Cohen and reached out to a number of people. But she saw Dr. Anderson in her office. And Dr. Anderson saw two bruises on her face and told me, my husband kicked me and he pushed me and he punched me in the head. And should I call the police? Objection, Your Honor. What should You're I saying. do? She's not reading, Your Honor. She's I'm just saying the significance. Sustain the objection. Next okay. question. All right. What were your. Uh, what conclusions did you make as a result of Dr. what you reviewed for Dr. Laurel Anderson? My take of reading Dr. Laurel Anderson's deposition and seeing her, you know, redacted notes was that, you know, from my professional opinion, this was a very serious incident and a very serious um, allegation of intimate partner violence by Mr. Depp. If a patient comes into my office with two bruises and alleges being pushed, shoved, and kicked by her partner, I'm going to be very concerned and I'm going to mobilize a lot more resources to help that individual. Um, and for some reason, um, that did not happen for Ms. Heard. Okay. What are your overall clinical impressions from reading these notes from Amber Heard's treatment providers and their couples therap therapists? Objection compound. Uh, all right, sustained. What are your overall clinical impressions from reading what you told everybody you read? Uh, objection compound. I, I mean, I don't know how to get it less compound, Your Honor. Overruled, go ahead. Thank you. So my overall impression of, of the, the treatment notes was, you know, there's significant support for the fact that there was intimate partner violence in this relationship. Um, it was consistently reported over time, um, and there were couples therapists who saw and understood that. Um, so, you know, there were, uh, Mr. Depp also attended a session with Dr. Connell Cohen with Ms. Heard. Um, and in that session, um, he was very belligerent and mean and yelling and intimidating, and he even got up and stormed out, rolled a joint, and then came back later. Dr. Connell Cohen's impression was this is somebody who's poorly controlled. That's the same thing that Dr. Laurel Anderson said about him. And he stormed out of one of those sessions too. So there were a total of six sessions, couple session, but Mr. Depp stormed out of two of them. So there are only four couple sessions um, for these two individuals in this just highly volatile, highly damaging um, relationship that was you know, punctuated by the coercive control and the intimate partner violence. What, if any, observations did you make about Amber Heard's psychological status over the, that period? 
I mean, the record was very clear that her psychological status deteriorated as she was in the relationship with Mr. Depp. She kept getting worse. She was losing weight. She, by the end, she was down to, I think, 105 pounds from about 125, 130. She was taking significantly more medication than she's ever taken in her life. She was having more panic, more anxiety, more distress. Um, more affect dysregulation, just really uh, uh, an inability to regulate her mood, more anger outbursts. Um, so it can significantly deteriorate over time. You talked about weight. What, if any, diagnoses did um, Bonnie Jacobs make about Amber Heard having uh, an eating disorder? There was no evidence in the record that Ms. Heard had an eating disorder. Uh, what, if any, observations did you make about whether Dr. Cowan Connell thought she had an eating disorder. There was no indication in his record that she had an eating disorder. Okay. Now, what, if any, uh, observations did you make about uh, the impact of Mr. Depp's substance abuse? So the substance abuse was a very relevant and, and complicating factor to this relationship. When you pair that level of substance abuse with the level of intimate partner violence and coercive control, it's a very, very disastrous mix. And one of the things that, that happens with the substance abuse is a very similar dynamic that happens with the intimate partner violence, that there's, there's the lying, there's the hiding, there's the cheating, there's the the obfuscation, you know, the rationalization about the drinking, the rationalization about the violence, the trying to, you know, promises, I'm going to do better, I'm going to get clean and sober, I'm not going to hit you anymore. Objection, so, Your Honor. Can, can I be heard? You're going to approach? 